coming up on More Than Before. What impact do you want to make outside of your career, your business? What do you actually want to be remembered for even after you pass? This is More Than Before with Nathan Cook. Hey everyone, welcome back. My guest today is making a huge splash in the creative world. He is a full-time content creator who has over 173,000 followers on Instagram, over 600,000 followers on TikTok, and over 538 million views on YouTube alone. He truly has a voice in this space, and I love to see what he is doing right now to make an impact in the world. I'm also excited to get to know a little bit more about the man behind the personality. He's a husband, a man of faith, an entrepreneur, but most importantly, he's a friend of mine. JC Rodriguez, welcome to the show. How are you today? Dude, it's an honor, man. Thanks for uh, the warm intro. Thanks for gathering those stats too. I haven't really <laughs> measured my <laughs> my like results lately, so super cool to hear that. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I was going through some of your stats, I think a couple a couple weeks ago, and I was like, oh man, he's almost to this number. He's almost to that number. <laughs> and I looked at them today and I was like, well, I guess he's not almost anymore. He's over it. So I, it's, it's cool to see the momentum that you have gained over the course of the last three years with doing this. Um, and maybe starting off kind of with where you are right now, and then we'll kind of go back a, a little bit of like your story and, and kind of how you got here. But what are you doing nowadays? What's your focus? Um, because you are full time in the content creation. Uh, what is what does that look like in your day to day life? Yeah, so right now, my personal brand is all about personal finance, but also building wealth in as least of a stressful way as possible. Um, a lot of people that watch like my community, it's a lot of young adults who are like graduated from college starting to figure out what to do with their new salary, where to invest it. But also I kind of want to break away from the typical finance bros out there who just talk about, you know, like trying to beat the market and individual stocks and crypto and teach a way that's more manageable for the long term. Yeah. And just honestly, just sharing what I do in my, my life. So I'm like, I don't really pitch myself as like the expert that knows all and has been through it. Like I'm the guy that's learning with my community because I myself just got married like a little over a year ago and graduated yeah. college two years ago. So day to day, it's just, I wake up at like 5.55, make sure to get some journaling, a little scripture study in there. And then afterwards, I just hop right into whatever project I have, which honestly, it's a lot of writing. If you think yeah. of like creating, it's a ton of writing. I love I love that you say that you don't kind of position yourself in the expert because it's very contrary in kind of the world that we're in. Everyone is trying to say I'm the expert. I, you know, we met last year at the Ramsey Influencer event. Ramsey Influencer event. We didn't get to talk too much at that point, but I, I remember John Deloney saying that stop calling yourself an expert. <laughs> Like just stop saying it and, and just show up as the person that you're supposed to be the person you're created to be. And I think that's, what's really cool about your content is you really do get that feeling that this is who you are. It is your life. In fact, it's, it's cool to see how much content that you've had over the years. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and there have been, there have been moments where you kind of started to take off and then you stopped. It's like, start, stop, start, stop. Like most entrepreneurs, I'm like that mm -hmm. too. I find something, I go, oh, that would be really good. <laughs> and then after like being calmed down and talked up the ledge, yeah, we don't need to get in the yacht club. We, we don't need to get into the, you know, the deck building card, card business or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. where did, where did you grow up? Where did uh, you, your family actually, it's, I thought it was kind of interesting about your story that. Yeah, you are a first generation American, which is really cool because uh, I would imagine your family coming over and seeing your success and what you've done, being able to build on the momentum. I, I don't know. There's just something amazing about that and really inspiring. What was what was your early childhood like and and who were you as a child? Yeah, so growing up like Filipino American my parents had a balance between like the Filipino traditions, but honestly, I would say the one reason they assimilated so well here in the States was because of like their faith mm -hmm. and they were involved in a church community. And I feel like 
that kind of separated them from like typical immigrants who would come here and, you know, not have the right education. Like, thankfully they were going to church, they were talking to others and like actually learning and like picking up new skills and learning the financial system of America because most Filipinos, they come here to America, they think, wow, land of luxury, let's buy the Gucci bag, <laughs> let's, let's yeah. wear the Prada. Uh, but my parents, thankfully, had that little difference in mindset and they like carried that on to me as a kid. And so growing up, I would see my parents learning these things as we went along because literally when I was born, that was around the time my parents like lost their house because they didn't know what they were doing. And mm. then over time, over the years growing up, I would see them learn about like frugality and learn about investing. And my dad started listening to Dave Ramsey on the radio. And that was what I grew up around. I never thought we were like wealthy or anything, but turns out my parents were like building up wealth and they were like paying off our house early and doing like a lot of crazy stuff. But I didn't see the fruits of that because I just kind of saw my other friends enjoying the new, the newest game console or like the newest Nerf gun and that, that toy or whatever. And I was here just like, I would only use the stuff when I was at their houses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so with that saving mindset, that's, I, I grew up with that. And, you know, as an Asian American, I thought I was going to be a doctor like most Asian Americans. Right. And yeah. then I ended up going on this less orthodox path of, uh, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and finance. Yeah, I, man. It's, it's cool to see even like your parents and doing kind of all the odd jobs and kind of seeing how that's translated to where you are now where like, yeah, you're, you're very focused on what you do. However, you've never been unwilling to try something new uh, to kind of break it and remake it, which is, it's, which is kind of fun. Now, in the lineup of kids, uh, I'm, I'm curious where you were and kind of how that affected how you showed up. And, and I think it's funny, too. I, I'm, and maybe this is maybe this is just me, but I have a good friend who's um, from the Philippines. And she always says, uh, Filipino culture is family. And it's not just your immediate family. Like, family mm -hmm. is the family of the family of the <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. it's everyone in the community. And so for her, life was all about big family gatherings is is that kind of similar from your experience of having a lot like even though it's extended family but it's really just family together yeah so with the family that was in america like we gathered all the time every few months i always knew my cousins i even knew my second cousins and sometimes third cousins i would i would lose track to be honest i would just <laughs> I would just like assume everyone was related and my parents introduced me to um but that that like was a really core part of growing up and for me, like growing up with, in, in my family, I was the youngest of two older brothers. And so it was a very, we were competitive, right? And I knew like I was the youngest. I assumed that I was like the golden child. Like they got it right the third time. <laughs> and I was like, man, I gotta, <laughs> I kind of gotta level up or like do, do, do everything they did, except maybe like a step above <laughs> what they yeah. did too. And it was also a nice position to be in because you get to see also your older siblings mistakes as well too. Yeah. kind of pick and choose what you want to apply. Um, so I watched them go on and they're very successful now too. I think one thing my parents instilled was like a strong work ethic. Um, and so for me, I don't know, I was always kind of the young youngest also like very creative. I always wanted to build things. And like, I had these ideas that I would like obsess over for like long periods of time. And I, I feel like that young, like desired, like I had a lot of dreams and I actually stuck with them. And literally now I'm living my childhood dream because I actually kept doing that, the weird thing that everyone thought was weird, like making videos online and posting it, embarrassing yourself. Um, but it all kind of paid off. <laughs> I, I, you know, I love some of your earlier videos. I, I, so oh gosh. being, I was the youngest <laughs> of, of three kids, uh, youngest of four kids. And, uh, it was always fun. Like we always had these, uh, we, we would call it cops and robbers and we'd go out and we'd like try and hide from each other. And uh, I don't even know what we did. I feel like we were tackling each other half the time or something yeah, like manhunt, manhunt. Um, but there was the, you had some really, I don't know. I, I feel like you had these really cool opportunities to have like massive airsoft wars 
And like, <laughs> I, like community within siblings was, has been huge, I think, for you. But community like within friends, how, how important has it been to surround yourself with the right people that believe in something bigger, doing something that maybe is further beyond than what you even think is possible? Yeah, I got to contribute a lot of my creativity to my brothers helping that out too. Like we were all obsessed over making videos and like things that are entertaining for our family and our friends to watch. And we always wanted to get like a lot of views, right? Um, and that's what we were known for growing up. Um, I would say they were kind of like my start to help me get on this journey of like video creation. And then as I grew up, you go to high school, your dreams kind of die a little bit because you kind of want to fit in a little more. Yeah. And once I went into college, and well, after high school, I, I went on a mission for my church for two years. And then I went to college. And by and that, that was point, a very glorious mission because you got to go to Las Vegas, right? <laughs> yeah, of all places, man. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 they need some missionaries out there. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, I turned Sin City into just city. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but like, it's weird brushing over that, but like it, well, that was a huge part of my life, definitely. And by the time I went back to college afterwards, I like dropped all the expectations or the cares about like what people think of me and having to fit some certain path because on my mission, I like saw so many different lifestyles and met so many people that like my world was opened up. You know, I don't have to stick to the Asian American plan of being a doctor, right? Like I can go and do my own thing with this. And so that's when I needed to build a community around me of others who were, you know, about entrepreneurship, about the creator world and personal finance. Yeah. That's so cool. Oh, well, <laughs> it's so good. So now you, you actually went to college, you studied, you studied finance, right? Um, mm -hmm. at the university of Florida. University of Central Florida. Central Florida. Yep, yep. Yeah, I can't get that messed up. My wife's Big a difference, my man. wife is a Seminole. Yeah, I was talking to her about <laughs> you last night. She's like, "Oh, I don't know about this guy." <laughs> <laughs> what were uh, what were what were some of your habits when you were in college? Because I, I find that most entrepreneurs, like truly hardcore entrepreneurs, that want to, they're focused. They know what they want. And they don't find themselves in kind of the party scene and going out. Like maybe there's adventure that's there, but mm. it's a different kind of adventure than the typical college experience. What was your college experience like? And how did that kind of shape who you are today? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like because a little part of it was like childhood, I feel like my parents gave me a pretty good self-esteem. And so I had this feeling like, wow, I feel like I can do better than average and in order to do those things, I had to do things that not the average person were doing. So I remember my last couple of years of college, I would wake up at like 5 a.m. and like edit a TikTok or something and make sure I did like one every day. And when I started doing that routine, that's when like my stuff really started growing. And that's when I started like getting to monetize. Mm -hmm. um, so I always woke up early, like before most people. And then I would make sure I would... <laughs> I would be like really meticulous on how I like planned out each of my days. I had Google calendar like filled to the brim with just events. So like every moment of every day was pretty productive, you know, until I found a girlfriend and you had to, had to make some leeway <laughs> Production there. went down for a small period of time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what, that's what my routine looked like in college. I, yeah, I didn't go out too often. Like if I was invited, yes, but it was never my idea to like go downtown you know and that wasn't that wasn't yeah. my brand <laughs> so you you graduate from college and you find yourself kind of going to the the work industry where where did you initially kind of get your you know where did you cut your teeth actually actually before you even uh graduated college you that's kind of when you found yourself falling in love with finance right what what drew you into the financial industry specifically was it was it childhood was it seeing your family it was a uh, I, I was an intern at one point at a financial advising firm i thought it was the most boring thing ever and then I, after that internship i thought back and i'm like the guy i worked for he like was a financial advisor he was actually a really good mentor but his lifestyle and his like first of all his schedule really it was nice i'm like he works like four days a week he'll play tennis in the mornings with some of his clients has a big family and supports them. Like actually lifestyle is great. 
And then also, I don't want to be a doctor. Like, I don't want to just help people because they're dying. Like, I want to, I want to be able to help people, you know, just live a better life. And so, yeah, that was there. Grew up listening to Dave Ramsey. Knew like this is something I was always passionate about, and I had together myself. And so I'm like, let me help people out in this way. Mm. And in in this whole process, really, I even now, like, I still don't know what exactly all this is leading to, but I just know if I'm doing things today, it's all going to like culminate like into just more opportunities later on. So that was one of those things. Like, let me just sign up for this financial mastery, you know, coaching course. It was in the middle of COVID and I wasn't exactly sure how I'd use it or how I'd turn it into a business, but it felt like a good thing to do. (laughs) And if I'm not mistaken, that was one of the first really big, I mean, college is a big investment, but that was like one of the first really big investments in you, Six, $1,600 to mm-hmm. invest in a certification program. I, like I remember in my journey, when I saw the price tag to go through a training that was specifically just for me, it wasn't college. I, I looked at that and I was like, man, I'm I'm not worth that much money. And there was kind of this internal wrestling dialogue with myself of, am I worth this kind of investment, mm-hmm. uh, that first big investment, how did you wrestle with that of investing in yourself? And then how has that possibly encouraged you to make greater investments later on down the road? Yeah, that's something like, I didn't realize how many, how much successful people invest in themselves and their education, especially around this time. Like I was working at Papa John's and like, I just saved up this money and mid COVID and yeah, that was like the biggest check I've ever written. So, but when I made that investment, I knew like, wow, I have to like take this seriously because now this is out of my own pocket. And I kind of realized the importance of kind of having some skin in the game. Right. And of course for me, I'm trying to do math. Like, all right, how long would it take to earn this back <laughs> yeah how much do i have to <laughs> charge my people? roi <laughs> yeah and um fast forward like three years later i was like making my next biggest investment ever in myself and it was like a six thousand dollar youtube coaching program and like me back then would have like thought that would that would be ridiculous but it's really true like people who are like successful in the business world, entrepreneurship, like they invest a lot into education, mentorship, all that. One of the things I really love is the ability to surround ourselves with people that are bigger than us. And I think mentors are definitely people that pour into our lives that get us to where we really should be and need to be in our life. Who were some of the biggest mentors in your life and what has mentorship meant to you throughout your career and and really just life in general? Yeah. So my biggest mentor in the social media world had to be Justin. Um, I said he like, we worked on this like page together and he was kind of that expert in the creator economy, this new world of like young, young people who are hustling and like getting brand deals and like building their personal brands. And uh, through him is where I like, you know, asked a lot of questions, met a lot of people who were do- doing this thing full time. You know, that's what made my my dream less of a dream and more of like an actual reality that I can like touch and see and like actually talk to someone living in it. Um, when it came to like just the finance world and like being a entrepreneur, like that's where I was actually looked up to my old financial advising mentor, you know, Mm -hmm. the guy I interned with, his name was Christian. He's a man of faith. He was someone that like, had a big family, like seven kids, but also had a very flexible schedule that allowed him to, you know, be present with them and like enjoy a lot of like activities outside of just the job. Mm. And then, yeah, mentors played a huge role in anyone and anyone's journey, because there's one thing to like watch a YouTube video or to take a course or to join like a, a group coaching program. But it's another thing when like, there's one person that like understands you know, you as a person, but also understands your relationship. Like you're going to ask them questions. They're going to provide their experience and value. And it's not like a weird thing where like, is it okay to ask? Like, no, no, no. You both are under the same understanding that like, 
That's a I'm horrible question. Some Beat them down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Actually, I, I am curious about that. Uh, what What would you say are like the most for you? What have been the most important aspects of finding someone to mentor you? Like, what What are those key key features about that person that you truly look for? Yeah, I think at the beginning, honestly, you have to look at yourself and think, what can you offer? And at the start, a lot of times, the only thing you can offer is just your time, being willing to like work and like give them some of your time to like help bring value to them. And then for like the mentorship part itself, to be honest, it's just, you should look at their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. For me, looking at their family life matters a lot too. Cause there's a lot of like gurus out there where I don't, I don't really know about how their what well, life at home looks like. And that's like, that's what I really want to have in order before I try to grow a business. Right. Like I want, I want to, I want someone that's balanced. Wow. That is so good. Were you, were you a good student in school? Oh yeah. I was a, yeah. You were, you were like, the, you were like the student that <laughs> you were the one that were breaking the curve for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I feel like it, it, it went down in college because I knew at that point, like, <laughs> I, I, try, I went really hard in high school, like, great student in high school, dual enrolled, AP classes. My GPA was, like, weighted was, like, 5.0 or something crazy. And then I got into community. I started at community college, and I realized all my high school hard work just, like, went down the drain because, like, <laughs> I'm in community college. Like, I didn't really need to do all that. And so... I focus on working like smarter <laughs> yeah. and not, not so much focus on the grades, but like, you know, doing things that are more practical for yeah. my career. <laughs> so when you, when you made the investment, I'm curious, the $6,000 investment, uh, into the YouTube coach, I'm curious, when did you, when did you start to realize that this was something that you really wanted to pursue full time? I mean, cause mm -hmm. you know, throughout your life, you can see those seeds of success and significance of like doing the videos, like video after video after video of like, why am I, this video makes no sense. There's no point to the video, but I love making the video. And then getting to a point where you're, you actually fall in love with the process of it. And you're thinking, could I, do I want to pursue this full time? What was, what was that point for you where you realized that this was actually a viable option that you wanted to pursue? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there were two key points that like led me to full time. One was after I first really started like blowing up on TikTok through just some street interview videos, I got DM'd by like this media company. Turns out to be just another creator who made videos about college and like how to navigate the, a university and college. And he asked me to be a part of his team to make more street interview style videos. And so I started working with someone, his name is Justin, who ended up actually being a really good mentor because not only did he have his own like media company, but he was very involved in the creator economy and very business minded. And we blew up his page. And at that point he started taking me to different conferences and events where I met people doing it full time. Mm. So that's what turned this dream of mine more into a, of a reality because I'm like, man, if these people can do it. I can do it too. Right. Like there's, it's just about like who, you know, a lot of times too, just to show you what's possible. And with him is when I first got our, my, like my first brand deal, like for that page, but like, it was a nice yeah. lucrative brand deal for like a few thousand dollars, like just for a couple videos. And then by the time I graduated college, I started monetizing my own page and I was going to be a financial advisor, still thinking like, I'm going to do this part time until the financial advising company told me that in order to work with them, I had to either delete or like stop uploading on my own pages or pay them a thousand, a few thousand a month so that they can get a compliance officer to like oversee all of my content that I put out. And that was kind of my turning point. That was like my fork in the road. Yeah. That's when I chose to go full time into creator mode. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, it's so crazy. Cause I don't think most people understand that people in the financial industry, like in those different categories, like you cannot have uh, videos and content on social media. Like they're like, there's legalities around it, which is why they have mm -hmm. compliance officers and, and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of crazy. And so 
I, it almost sounds like that would that was kind of a crucible moment for you of like, hey, you can either go yeah. down this financial path and have maybe some quote unquote stability, or you can quit and you can go do this other thing and hope that it works out. And mm-hmm. so you, it sounds like that was kind of a huge bet that you made on yourself, which I find the greatest bets that we make are on ourselves because we're the only ones that we can actually influence whether we follow through or not. You start making money in what you're doing. You start investing in yourself. I think what's really interesting is the the type of persona that people see uh, on the videos doesn't always match up the persona of the person in the everyday life. And I'm curious, Mm -hmm. like for the person, like all of your videos, super high energy, like you come across as the outgoing, like, and like even some of your earlier videos, you're very outgoing, but you have this kind of uh, island vibe flow, like, yeah, it's all right, man. Like, don't worry about it. Like, we don't need to rush the conversation, maybe a little bit more reserved. Um, how do you how do you balance that dichotomy of because you kind of have to have high energy if you want people to look at your videos? Um, mm-hmm. How do you balance that dichotomy between like your natural disposition of maybe being a little bit more flow versus being higher energy? <laughs> yeah, so that, that's like the big difference I made this year is I didn't want to build a community just around the videos and the content. I wanted to build a community around me and like who. I am as a person. So if you see the earlier videos, I was definitely more about like what would be like best for going viral, the retention. People wa- watch those videos, but they were watching for like the crazy reaction or like the controversial thing that the person said well, that I was interviewing and they wouldn't be watching for me. Right. And they yeah. wouldn't even like hit follow for me either. They just wanted to see more interesting interactions with like you know, you know, people saying crazy stuff. So yeah, <laughs> that's why I like, I toned it down a ton. I just, I went back to just using my phone, just doing voiceover content and not trying to play up a, a character so much throughout the videos. So now we're seeing that transition where people are now like messaging me, asking me for like the advice or asking me just questions about life and relationships and money. And it's been way better. And also even in the YouTube videos too, like I try not to, I feel like that's how you get burned out is by like playing a character. But if you're like doing something that you'd be doing anyways, or acting a certain way that you'd be acting anyways without the camera, Mm -hmm. it's a whole lot more sustainable. (laughs) Yeah. I think everyone has these moments in their life where they kind of have to make that decision. It's kind of a crucible moment of who are you going to be in the times where things are hard. Um, and not everything has to be like, you know, I, I lost a limb and that's when I, you know, I got cancer and now all of a sudden I knew exactly what I was supposed to do, you know, who I was supposed to be in my life. I think some of us, I think the majority of us don't have those kind of epiphanies and realizations. And we kind of, if we're not careful, if we fantasize that that's the way it happens, we miss the opportunity for ourselves in hard times to kind of figure out who we are. I am curious, what are some of the moments in your life that you look back and you say, man, that was a really difficult time in my life, but that was the time where I grew the most and I really started to understand who I was. I would say it would be that that two-year mission um, because that was, the, that was like a time right after high school, right? And when you're 18 to 20 years old, most people at that age, it's more about like yourself and like, who are you going to become? Go find yourself. That's why these 18 year olds go and like take loans out to go up to another country to find themselves. And yeah. <laughs> this was also like a test of my faith too. Like, do I really want to go out for two years and kind of block out social media and my life back home for like, for Jesus, yeah. <laughs> for, for preaching the gospel? Like I better be, I better believe it myself if I'm going to like go out and do that. So there's a ton of imposter syndrome there too. So I had to figure that out, figure out myself. And even out and about on the in the mission field, it's like we had a pretty like strong schedule and we like had to plan out our days to make sure every day was productive and like making sure that we were fulfilling our purpose of bringing people towards Christ and you know, each day and also navigating those days with another person like uh, we had companions. If you see missionaries, they're always two by two. Yeah. Like that was like marriage training 101 like (laughs) living with these different people from different backgrounds and 
having to like set goals and like work together, you know, like, except now, thankfully I got to choose my wife instead of like getting assigned to a companion. <laughs> By the way, this is the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but that, that, that period of time was like, I can look back on it and be like, wow, I can't believe I stuck to something mm. every day for two years straight and was able to like change lives. And I was able to focus on other people outside of myself for two years. If I'm able to do that, like those are those moments that I can look back on and think, all right, if I can do that, I can do this. Right. Like, yeah. If I'm having trouble waking up early, like I've done that for two years. Like I can, I can jump back on that again. Well, I, and I think that the, the act of serving others really helps to take that focus off of ourselves. Like whether that's a, whether that's a mission that you go on or, you know, even going to a soup kitchen and serving there, um, getting married is another one of those pieces where you, if you're mature enough, you realize that it's not all about you. And I think having mm -hmm. kids is one of those things too, later on down the road that, you know, you start to realize how selfish you can become as a person. And when you put yourself in the environment of being able to serve, it actually opens up your ability to use those gifts that you've been given. Um, what are some of those gifts? Like, if you look back on your life, is, is storytelling the gift? What would you say is the gift that you have when you are thinking of a concept of, you know, making some kind of content or putting it together? What is the piece that you find yourself falling into that you love so much because it is a natural gifting? Um, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm good at breaking down things that can be complex into very simple, uh, understandable pieces of information. Like, I don't know, like my, my content about finances, you don't see me using any language past the sixth grade level. <laughs> It's not statistical analysts <laughs> analyzing things. <laughs> yeah. And um, another thing too, you know, but I'm just thinking about like gifts that like yeah. I've had, or at least people have shared with me that I've had. It's like making people comfortable. Like that's something I have to do when I'm interviewing people on the street and like interrupting their day. Yeah. So I feel like that's something that has developed over years of like, getting rejected door to door as a missionary. And also I even have like sales, like sales experience too, like door to door sales too. Like that was yeah. a lot of rejection and a lot of learning about how to approach people and make people comfortable. Things that transfer really well into this space. Yeah. How did you overcome rejection? Cause that's a huge thing. I think people struggle with is the feeling of being rejected by another human being whether that's on, you know, a video or whether that's in real life, like go and talking to the girl or the guy, Oh, I'm going to get rejected. How do you overcome that rejection, that ability, mm -hmm. like even just the fear of rejection? Yeah. I think one thing that's like innate within me is just, I'm very optimistic, like almost too optimistic. A lot of times too, like that movie inside out just came out, right? Yeah. Like the little joy in there is like, doing a lot of work <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> um, but also I think having your why in place, like understanding mm -hmm. why you're doing that thing helps you get past the rejections a lot easier too. Whether that's trying to hit your goal that day, whether it's, you know, that your purpose is like sharing your faith, like sharing faith in Jesus Christ. Like that's a huge why that would mm -hmm. get you past a lot of rejections. So if that, if you don't have a big reason why or a big goal for why you're getting rejected, then yeah, it's probably going to bring you down. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Cause I think, I think some of us could stand uh, to really embolden and build up faith uh, and build up our confidence to be able to go out and do things that maybe uh, are uncomfortable. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, th there was a, a video a long time ago of you uh, getting to travel with your family to the Philippines and uh, <laughs> if you ever want a fun video to watch, and it's not for the for the uh, squeamish at heart, but if you want to watch uh, JC uh, eating uh, balut for the first time, uh, it's it's not something for everyone. But it is it, there is something about adventure in your life that you that you love to bring in, and I, I think you, I think you're right. I think you bring a welcoming presence to invite people in to experience and to try new things. Uh, JC, mm -hmm. uh, I love having you on. It's been so much fun. I have one more question here before we kind of wrap up. 
Uh, but for yeah. all of you listening, I do want to encourage you. I want you to go check out JC's content. It is so good. Uh, you can find him on YouTube at it's JC Rodriguez, or you can also follow him on Instagram at JC Rodriguez dot co. Um, or if you don't want to go and type in all that stuff, just go to the show notes. It's all going to be there. Uh, that way you can go check it out. He has uh, just amazing content that is down to earth. You could just sit there for hours watching his red flag content <laughs> of whether people agree or disagree or, or what they would do. Um, so I, it, it's just phenomenal. Uh, JC, because you've been in this world of social media for a while now, and uh, you know a lot of people I find when they look at social media, they really do lose their identity. They get wrapped up into it. They... They have shiny, you know, they have shiny object syndrome with, oh, well, I'm not doing that or I'm not doing this. And there's kind of the grass is greener on the other side. I was just talking to someone earlier today about, you know, if you have, if you, there's a picture of cows in a field and there's a fenced in area keeping all the cows out and you've got four cows sticking their head through the fence, trying to eat the grass that's on the other side of the fence. And that's kind of how we are. We look at things <laughs> and we're like, oh, the grass is better on the other side. We have all this stuff around us, possibility, opportunity. I, I'm curious for you in, in terms of your identity and how you show up, how do you balance living in reality, the real world, and living in the digital space? Because uh, it, it really can, we can cross over and forget that we're actually in a physical world, not a digital world. So, you know, how do you keep that balance and how would you encourage someone who wants to pursue living um, kind of in a similar world of getting to create content for people all over the world to enjoy and possibly even invest in. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing about me that I try not to do is like, I, I like going on social media to upload and create. And then after that, I'm pretty much out, <laughs> like, not really consuming or like getting influenced. And this was also pretty much tested when we were preparing for our wedding too, because like, it's easy to have these ideas of what you want your wedding to be. And then you go on Instagram and then you suddenly get all these other ideas from like <laughs> Pinterest and all that. And like things you didn't even think were possible or you needed suddenly feel like such a need in your own life, in your wedding for that example. Yeah. I would say though, you can't like base your worth off of the social media stats like you covered at the beginning. Um, like yesterday, my wife and I went to church and it's been like three weeks. And literally in three weeks, I felt a little bit out of touch with like spirituality and even like, you know, like the things that matter most. Cause I was so like involved in thinking about the, my next project, like this paid community, this, um, all the technical work things that can cloud your mind. And so I think it's important to like make time to like connect with those immediately around you mm. <laughs> and make time to focus on other people as well too. Like, like you said, serving others really gets you out of your own head and out of your own issues and problems. And honestly, I think that that cures a lot of depression too. Like just turning outside, you know, mm. away from yourself. So that, that'd be my biggest thing. Like what impact do you want to make outside of just your career, your business? And like, what do you actually want to be remembered for like even after you pass too right because they always say you know like the people don't exactly remember everything you say to them and they might not remember all the videos you make but they will remember like the way you made them feel so that's, that's my, so good my take i love that that's so good jc i really do appreciate you coming on the show spending some time with us for all of you listening out there make sure you go and like this episode share this episode with a friend and go and connect with JC. If you want to learn more of how to be an influencer in this space, how to create content that is meaningful, that impacts, that you can actually get your voice out there, go connect with him. Uh, he's, he's just a wealth of knowledge. Until next time, remember to be more, see more, and experience more than before.